Hey everyone, welcome to an Opus 18 deck tech, and this time <laughs> we're going back to the past. We are looking at the world of Final Fantasy. Yeah, that's right. We're doing a little uh, waff for Opus 18. Yeah, we did get a few new tools here, but I'll, I'll say up front, I'm not trying to revive this despite the name that waff is coming back. You know, this is still probably not really a super competitive deck. This is more just for the person who wants to have a good time you know, liked this archetype, this category back in the Opus 10 era, and just kind of wants to play with it again. It's still fine, you know, it's, I think it's still absolutely fine. I think it's very, probably more fair nowadays, but there's still some fun things you can do with it. We did get a few new tools to mess around with it. But yeah, don't, don't be able to expect you can take this to some, you know, big tournament and clean up with it, because it still, unfortunately, has a lot of weaknesses nowadays. But if you're looking just for have some fun, dig out your old WAF cards, dust them off. Here's what we're going to do. We'll revisit it. Okay, so uh, if you don't know what WAF is or what the WAF category was back in Opus 10, this was actually a Worlds tournament level deck, uh, really based off of this rain. So this rain is what makes the package work. She costs five, but her cost is reduced by one for every category WAF character you control. It was one of these uh, first big cards that could be reduced to zero, could be completely free. So we are incentivized to play as many WAF characters as possible. She's also going to give any WAF wards other than herself haste. And then when any category WAF ward attacks, you get to choose a forward opponent controls and Rain's going to deal at 4,000 damage. Now, this was quite awesome in the day because it revived a lot of these old cards like Alwyn and it got some new support and it's Lon and Rorik and Luce that uh, you had all these cards out of nowhere could haste you just blow you off the board. Unfortunately... You know, she's incredibly susceptible to Amaterasu. Uh, there's just a lot more removal in the game that's immediate, whereas a 4K on its own generally isn't going to kill much these days. You're going to need two of them. Nonetheless, there's still some fun to be had here. So real quick, I'll go over some of the old choices. Uh, Alwyn is just a really great target. If you control five or more WAF characters other than herself, which is very easy because our backup line is just loaded with WAF characters, She's going to have a total of 5,000 power plus Brave, and she'll get 4,000 when you just have three. That one's pretty easy to hit. And then so once she's on, you have this 10K Brave that just hits something for 4K when you attack. Awesome. Lon, uh, when you, if you control the rain, he gets 2K in first strike, which works so well with the 4K ping because you ping whatever you think they could block you with. Now even if they block, Lon has first strike, so he's going to knock it out. He also has a second effect that when he enters the field, you choose a monster that's also a forward. Until the end of the turn, it gains 5,000 power and brave. That's not super relevant here. It, it can be. It, it can. There are still monsters in here that will make it work, but he's mainly there just to be a cheap body that can come in and, you know, pop for the damage. Back in the day, the old Frit was really good, but I just didn't think putting both a Frit and an Efrit in here to search that out was worth it. Uh, and then we'll we'll just go over the backup line really quick because just the WAF characters we're loaded with. Uh, one Sigwardius, one Pelinor. Their effects are irrelevant here. They're just there because they're Earth characters that have the WAF category. Two Loose. She can give a card named Rain or uh, Lon Brave by dulling her. And then she also gets cheaper if you control Lon and Rain. Uh, and she can become zero as well. So if you happen to have Rain and Lon out there and not Loose, Loose comes down for free. Rarely does that come up. I almost always see Loose first, but... It's technically there if you want it. Uh, Rorik, he's an EX burst. He will recur a lawn or a rain from your break zone. Usually you're trying to get a rain because, uh, that, again, that's your key card that makes everything worse. Uh, work, not worse. Yeah, she makes everything worse. No, she makes everything work. Girl who forgot her name, it's your generic category searcher. Search for any category wall forward. Again, you're probably almost always going to grab the rain. Maybe you're going to grab our new Seraphy here if you already have a rain. Masked Woman. She enters the field, choose a doll for it, a four or less opponent controls break it. Gah. Is this card old or what? A three cost. I mean, it's good removal if they have a target, but uh, yeah, sometimes that can be a little tricky to line up. And then finally, Princess Goblin, because we are playing the Goblin package. So when she enters the field, you get to search for a light forward. There are no light forwards in here, so you will not be using her for the search, but it also means she'll never break. It's just here because she can be searched out by this Goblin which if you're familiar with the goblin package, so when he enters the field, you search for any job goblin. That includes he can search other copies of himself, and then you can also search her as a backup. Really like this combo, and then you can dull any one of these goblins to choose a four to hit it for 3,000. So with a rain ping, a rain plus a goblin, 
that can be 7,000 right there. Very nice and a nice little setup. But again, she's a category WAF character, so she's just going to add up to your numbers. Uh, and then the non-WAF backups, Shantoto, clear the board if things get out of hand. One copy of Tyro, color fixing, but mainly just a burst, search out whatever you want. And the damage five can always be relevant. Uh, and then one copy of Kuchaspel, he's in here exactly for the same reason these two copies of Adelard are, that you know you don't want to just immediately fall apart like if you're going against a Barret and Avalanche or Iridia or any card that just has a bunch of protection that, oh, cool, all my pings are worthless now. You know, you have to have something that can turn these off. So that's our backup suite. Uh, let's go over some of the new additions. So we have this brand new Seraphie. So when she enters the field, you can search for any card named Tama, add it to your hand. There are backup Tamas, and you could run those. I, I kind of wanted to run the new forward Tama because it gives us protection, but if you really wanted to, you could run a backup Tama. Um, but I think the forward one is a bit better. Then, when a forward of cost two or less enters your field, you place a gem counter on Seraphie. You can then remove two gem counters to draw a card. You can only use it on your turn only once per turn. To be honest, there are quite a few two-cost targets in here. We have Owen. Sorry. Owen, Lon, Arden, Adelard, and Tama. So there's quite a few targets to get that. However, the most I've ever been able to draw off of this is a single time, which is fine. It's not really there for, like, you're not trying to do some engine where, oh my gosh, I'm just getting so many gem counters and I'm drawing so many cards. She's a card that searches out something else. She'll usually draw you one and she's a wall forward. So it means she'll have haste if rain's on the field and she'll do a 4K. So, again, she can trade up with a 9k, and you're kind of okay with that. Like, if they want to give up their 9k to kill Seraphie, okay, who cares? So, the new Tama is actually... It's good for what it does. I don't know how good it is, like, technically, overall in the meta, but protection is always good. Tama, however, has the downside that it, she cannot attack or block, and I don't know why. I, I really don't understand why they put this text on forwards like this like she's just a 3k body i think she absolutely would have been fine to attack or block whatever anyway so she can't do that so she doesn't benefit from rain unfortunately however she herself cannot be chosen by summons or abilities and when a forward you control is chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities you can put tom into the break zone when you do so cancel its effect most players are going to try to kill your rain possibly even kill your owen because these are your threat, the threats, they want them off the board. So that the fact that you have Thomas says, nope, I'm going to cancel that entirely. And it even will cancel things that choose multiple targets. Think of the new Yuffie, Bloodfest, or uh, Doom of the Living, it's called. Or, you know, something that uh, the Bahamut summon, the four cost one, and it can target two targets. She'll cancel the entire thing, which is very nice. Uh, so I, I do like her for that protection. She is also a two cost, so she will feed into Seraphie's gem counter. Uh, and then she can be revived off of Phoenix as well. And I'll kind of go into that. That Phoenix has a lot of implications in this deck. Because there are so many two-cost forwards, Owen is an insane target off of Phoenix. You know, I've seen, back in the old day, that was a combo that you're in the middle of combat. Let's say you send the Owen in and they do something to kill her. You can Phoenix still in combat as long as the rain's on the field. Owen's going to come in, 2k to the board. She can immediately attack again, a ping again with rain. Uh, same with Lon, same, he can ping again, Adelard, you know, he doesn't have an initial ping on his own, so you can kind of be tricky with Tama, you can't Tama it in, into, in, in response to something, so like, let's say, uh, I'm hitting Rain with an Odin to kill her, if Tama isn't on the field at the time, she's not going to see that trigger, so you can't Phoenix it in in response, however, you can be a little tricky with it where y you know something's coming, right? So, like, let's say, oh, they're going to get an Odin back from their break zone with Man in Black or whatever. So, they're, they're stacking something that you know, okay, they're getting the summon back. They searched this forward out of their deck, whatever it is. So, you can Tama in, you can Phoenix in the Tama at that point preemptively to be like, all right, well, whatever you're going to do, I'm going to shut it down entirely. Is that the best use of it? Well, eh, probably not. But, you know, the option is there if you want. But, yeah, just don't remember you can't Tama it in in response and then still cancel it. That would be quite awesome i keep saying tama at inks i'm thinking of the old tama backup phoenix in it is what i'm trying to say uh real quick we'll go over the summons phoenix again great target for all these two costs uh really good target for arden which is why he's in here one he's a color fixer you're absolutely fine throwing this away early just to you know pitch for your different colors but with the phoenix until the end of the turn all the forwards you control gain 1k in the first strike that is really nice again so let's say rain herself goes in you need to keep rain alive Boom, shoot for 4K, 
Phoenix is another 2K. Now, even if they try to block her, Arden gives them a thousand first strike. Really, really good Phoenix target. Adelard is just in here, mainly again for the Kuchaspel effect. However, if you find yourself with the CP line around, you can pay to fire to double the damage your abilities are going to do. So you can double a rain ping. Rain's now doing 8,000 on her own. Pretty nice, right? Well, we've got even a better way to do that. So real quick, summons Mist Dragon. It's there for protection. Cancels their Amaterasu, which can protect your rain. Moves the break zone. You know, very good protective reactive summon. Kusith, just it's a burst. It's recursion. Lets you get rain. Lets you get your island back. Just keep using those Amaterasu. Is the best fire summon in the game. Arguably the best summon in the game. So those are the summons. Uh, two copies of Terra, of course, to go with that. Just to add the summons. And, of course, the 2k ping can sometimes be relevant with the Terra ping as well. Uh, and then now we have Bosch. Bosch is another multi-element fire earth. So he fits in our colors perfectly. And he lets us search out any fire or earth character we want. If it's early, maybe you slap them down. You want to get some of these backups out. Maybe you go grab a goblin so then you can start your goblin chain. Or if you want to get one of the cool new features of the deck. Ta-da! Two-headed dragon. So this card says when a fire forward you control attacks, choose a forward opponent controls, deal it 4,000 damage. So what that means is if he and Rain are on the field together, any waff forward that attacks, assuming it's fire, of course, so like the Seraphy isn't going to get it, but Lon and Alan and Rain herself, they will now ping something for 4,000. Or they can ping the same thing, you know, an 8K, 4K twice. Boom, Rain hits it. Boom, the dragon hits it. Well, the dragon himself, if he attacks, boom, he's going to hit for 4K. It's a really nice little boost to the set. My only complaint about him is that he is a bit expensive at four. Uh, most of this deck wants to run very cheaply. Again, Rain herself is are, is the most expensive card on a Ford, but it can become zero. You know, so that means that Terra like then takes that crown and she gets you one back. He gets you one back. So like there isn't a card you're actually paying a full five for in here on the Ford line. So he is a bit expensive. Uh, and obvious, but the mill effect is nice too. It, in a pinch, probably something that you want to overdo, but you know it, it keeps him safe from board wipe protection, like a Susano, like a Shantoto, like a Luso, which is very nice. And yeah, the combined ping is just great. And to add even more to that is Jin. So Jin and Twin Headed Two Headed Dragon are the two forwards. Lon can technically give five K Brave to if you really want. Jin will also increase the damage your fire forwards do. By another thousand. So if, again, if just Rain and Jin are on the field, any fire waff forward that attack, any any fire or waff forward that attacks, 5k, 5k, 5k. You know, if you have Jin and two headed dragon, now you're doing I think I believe 5k twice. So you're just doing a 10k on attack. Wanted to talk about a few little quote unquote tech slots. Uh, Squall is a is a very good forward for this deck because again he's going to do 4k to the entire board when he attacks. If you combine that with the two headed dragon, uh, with the rain follow up, you know, if he goes in first, no one ever wants to block Squall because they don't want that second hit. So you can send him in first, 4K to the board, and now rain, whatever follows up waff wise, is going to just start picking their board off, which is very good. He obviously works as well with Jin, two headed dragon. Uh, the reason I didn't ultimately put him in is I don't know. I just, I felt like I had enough fire ping, and I just find Squall to be a little unreliable for me. I don't necessarily want to dump my hand low to get haste. This deck has no way to control your opponent's hand, so that's unreliable. But if you want to put him in here, I think he is a good fit. Another thing is Brandalus. Brandalus was quite popular back in the Opus 10 deck, but we didn't really have better options then. He is nice because he searches out, he can search out two different backups for you, and it's on a burst. However, beyond that, uh, if you control both the backups, he becomes an 8k, but even if, like, even if you have both of them out, he just dies to Amaterasu by himself, and I just, I wasn't really keen on running a 5 cost 6k these days, even if he did search out a card that can just die to Amaterasu, and while he does benefit from rain, he doesn't benefit from 2 headed dragon or Jin. so you really want to go in on the Waff theme? Absolutely, pick up Randalus, but for me, I thought he was worth cutting, I thought it was just, but you know, Bosch kind of does his job anyway it searches you can search out one of these characters for him and he's cheaper so that's my take on world of final fantasy in opus 18 if you get to try this one out let me know what you think what are some cards you'd like to see uh, world of final fantasy get in the future it's kind of a such a strange 
category because it got so pushed in Opus 10 and it just died right afterwards. You know, Broska's Final Aeon put a big hit on it. Kadaj, Killing Up Your Break Zone put a big hit. And Amaterasu after that just made rain so hard to work with. So, again, reminder, this I don't I don't have any faith this will take you to the top of the moon in some major tournament. But could you win a, a week of locals with this? Yeah, I think so, especially when people aren't expecting it. So let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if there's other angles you enjoy and see and want to take it in. And as always, I appreciate you watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you're interested. And until next time, take care.